Howdy, YouTube. It's your friendly, uh, friendly neighborhood dad mods here again. And today, we're gonna be talking about the top 10 mistakes that I observed new players making in Lost Ark. Okay, so let's just cut right into it. First mistake, number one. Not equipping an ability stone. Uh, I've been doing a lot of pugging in uh, raids, T1, T2, T3. People do not equip their ability stones, okay? Uh, in game, there's a guide quest. If you press J, uh, it's literally just called Fauceting Ability Stones. You get it in Lutera. There's a guide quest. Uh, make sure you set this guide quest. It gives you like five starter stones. It'll teach you about engraving. Uh, and if you have even more questions about it, I got an engraving guide and uh, ability stone guide on my YouTube. So anyways, uh, yeah. Anyways, make sure you equip your ability stone. Your ability stone provides a bunch of power. Really gives you engraving effects. Okay. Anyways, uh, mistake number two is people not utilizing engravings. Engravings are basically powerful effects that are passive on your character and you build up stacks of them. Okay. There's uh, like my engravings or whatever on my character. There's a few ways to get engravings. There's books that you can obtain. There are different qualities. There's green book, blue books, epic books, legendary books. Uh, each book tier will give a different amount of point. A basic engraving book will give you like three points, like those drops of aether. Uh, no, this is a, I, no, I use 20 books, so this gives you plus six. And then um, over here on my class identity, right? I have epic, so it gives me plus nine. So anyways, make sure you equip your engravings. You could have duplicate engravings, right? So if I just want to put two supercharges on, I can. If I want to put grudges on, I can. Uh, or you can mix and match them. There's class engravings. Every class has two engravings. And there's also general engravings. These books or these powers are saved across your roster. They're not character specific. So if you build up an engraving on one of your characters, you make an alt, you can transfer it you just when you log in you can put your engravings on pretty simple another people make with another pe uh, mistake people make with engravings is uh using grudge grudge is a really really strong engraving however you only want to use grudge if it's tier three right because so there's different tiers of engravings little notches so the breakpoints are five ten and fifteen 15 full points gives you level three. Five full, uh, five, no, five full, five full points give you level one. 10 full points give you level two. Any points in between these numbers don't give you any additional effect. Level one grudge, basically this makes you take 20% more damage. You only do 4% damage. So uh, yeah, make sure like not to use level one grudge. And if you are gonna use grudge, make sure to use level three because it does have a lot of downsides for your character. Uh, let me just put my engraving back on. Okay, beginner mistake number three. Okay, this is a very simple one. Uh, you have multiple earring and ring slots. Um, and I guess a lot of people don't up their character panel, but I've inspected tons of people and there's so many people with level 20 earrings and rings. I've even seen some people in tier three with this. So when uh, you're equipping your gear, right? You just don't right click it, right? If you just right click, it'll do the first slot. You have to hold alt to do it, right? And the same thing to view your equipment. If you hold alt, it'll show both your earrings. So make sure to open up your character panel and make sure both earrings and both rings are of your current level. If you don't also like if you're using like a accessory Below the current tier, it also has a reduced effect. Okay. Uh, number four. Craftable Abyss Dungeon Sets. Uh, when you run Abyss Dungeons in Lost Ark, you'll basically get materials to craft uh, gear. So, like, you know, whenever you start out gearing out, you start out with the blue set. But then once you run your Abyssal Dungeons, you'll get some materials. And uh, you basically just go to a Abyss Dungeon Crafter, right? You just search it on your map over here. Enjoy the and this will allow you to craft a new set. 
and this will give you bonuses. And there's sets you get for every single tier. In tier one, you do this. In tier two, you do this. In tier three, you do this. The tier three, the tier three starter set is not that good. But so whenever you run your abyss dungeon, then tier one and two, you'll get an epic and you'll get a legendary set and make sure you craft them. Uh, you could also like when you craft them or whatever, this, this can cost me 100 gold. This is expensive. Uh, but when you craft them, if you want to like, uh, if it has like bad quality, which this one actually has amazing quality, I'm like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep this. But you can actually salvage it, break it down, and it'll return the materials to you. So there's certain items that you actually want to get good quality on, and one of those items is your weapon. If you look at our additional weapon damage, it's like 14.7%. Uh, anyways, if you want to like transfer your power from, uh, you know, like you don't, you don't lose your character power, so your blue set or your epic set, whenever you craft a new set, you just go to the gear honing vendor. And you go to this gear transfer thing, and then you'll put this one here, and then you just click the old one, and it literally transfers the power from your old piece of gear into the new piece of gear that gives you additional bonuses. Uh, but this is actually really crazy. I got a level 97 one. I'll fix that after this video is done with. That's actually completely wild. Uh, so make sure you craft and equip your Abyss dungeon sets with depending on whatever tier you're in. Uh, fifth thing new players are not doing is utilizing your stronghold and your life skills your life skills in lost ark are basically just your gathering skills you'll uh you know craft different equipment right to give you increased bonuses uh, most people look for super armor they look for rare material acquisition they look for a mini game chance and you basically just go and do your life skills every day you can just do them in different zones how do you know what zones to do them in the zone basically just have little indicators on what to do. Right, so the little symbols will tell you what to do. Anyways, your stronghold though is really, really important. It's basically your command center of Lost Ark. I'm gonna go to it real quick. You just press F2 to go back to your stronghold. You pretty much do everything in the game from your stronghold. It's an extremely powerful tool that a lot of people are ignoring. Okay. So why is your stronghold important? Well, first off, uh, your stronghold, you have like different levels. So you have like researches and stuff that you can dispatch out. Uh, when you uh, do researches uh, in your stronghold, it locks different capabilities. In your stronghold, like one of the first big things, if you're making an alt, there's honing uh, success rate chance. So it makes it easier to upgrade your gear. It also makes it so your gear costs less experience or less shards. You unlock this whenever your main character hits a new tier. So when your character gets to tier two, you could research this to unlock a uh, better success rate for your other T1 characters. When you hit tier three, you could do the same thing for tier two stuff. So increase honing's chance, success, and uh, less material cost within your stronghold. Uh, also within your stronghold is how you craft items, right? So you can make more potions. You can make more battle items that you can bring to battle, right? robes flares everything there's also cooking stuff there's structures uh this is also how you make your tools for uh your life professions so if you want to make better tools and accessories you could do this from your stronghold i can make a legendary tool uh, there's also special stuff so when you get to tier two and tier three this is how you make your fusion materials so this is for upgrading your gear and then you can also make these maps that are really good for currency which is called, uh, they're just archaeology uh, archaeology maps. So uh, you just get your archaeology materials, you craft these like little maps, they give you experience for your stronghold, you go and run them. Uh, they're actually available in a bunch of different areas, so you can start them in tier one and two, but they're really, really good for tier three because they give you uh, tradable items to sell in the auction house. Another nice thing about uh, your stronghold, uh, there is something called the uh, knowledge vault, right? This allows you to boost characters only for gold. You don't have to spend any real life money. Uh, but like, let's say if you want to make a new character, you don't have to play through the 10 to 15 minute story mission. Uh, you can just make that character, get them to the first town, like Pride Home. And then you could just come here and boost the character. Eight hours later, it'll be in North Vern. Your quest will be completed and it'll give you a basic 302 set. Right? That's pretty nice. Yeah. 
So yeah, you could just uh, you could just do uh, this. Will take eight hours for your transfer. Um, and then yeah, if you don't want to do the story mode missions again, you could keep on doing uh, your transfers all the way up to Phaeton. Another thing in your stronghold is this little training camp. Once your main character reaches combat level fifty-two, uh, you could put any of your characters in this training camp, and it'll basically level their combat level while you don't play it. So this is like a really, really good alt catch-up mechanic. Absolutely amazing for the game. And tons of people just absolutely ignore it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, uh, your leveling is level 10 to level 60, and it takes 8 hours. And this will give you free 302 gear. Uh, and then if you're wondering, there's also like merchants in your stronghold. Uh, that'll like rotate sales. Wow. Nice place you got it. So here. you can like buy stuff Our there. There's pirate nice coins too. and whatnot. Take a look. And there's also uh, trade skill items that you could buy. Also, this is how you craft better life tools for your gathering. You just trade the adventure seals for the crafting tools. And then you also have like your little own farms in your stronghold that will allow you to uh, do gathering in them. So you don't have to do them uh, in different like, uh, different zones. So you have to unlock them. I have to walk over here to show you. But yeah, you can do like gathering with your own uh, with your own stronghold too. So whatever you do, don't ignore your stronghold. Your stronghold is a very, very powerful tool. Uh, next thing uh, new players should know about that people don't do is uh, Procyon's Compass World Events and Sailing. So these are basically just your uh, quick time events that pop up. Uh, your Procyon's Compass is right un under your mini-map over here. These are basically daily events that actually could give you quite a bit of currency. Items, maps, uh, island hearts, resources. So make sure to check your Procyon's Compass once a day. And then if you like click them, it'll tell you where they're at. There's also uh, little quick time events up here. Make sure to always look at your quick time events. And if you hover over the quick time events, It'll show you the rewards. So make sure you're doing your islands and your little quick pop up events. Uh, when you already do your world boss and stuff, this is one of your Procyon's Compass things. It'll be grayed out. Uh, I actually end up getting the legendary bleed rune today, right? So I did Orion 1385. Even though I'm not even 1385 level, uh, you can actually Zerg this boss down with a bunch of other people and you can complete it, right? And this is how I got my legendary bleed rune. So make sure you do your world events in your islands. Uh, Co-op sailing is really good for pirate coins. Uh, if you want the ashtray boat, uh, you'll need a bunch of pirate coins. There's also exchanges that need to be done for coins, uh, like giant hearts and different island stuff. So if you ever need uh, more uh, coins, this is how you do it. You can also exchange your different coins for more pirate coins. Either there's weekly exchange vendors where you can get resources for upgrading your character. Uh, there's also, uh, you can trade it for cards and you can also trade it for, uh, ability stones, right? So make sure you do your sailing co-op. Also, when you do your sailing co-op, it'll give you keys, uh, which will unlock Harmony Gate. So you go to Harmony Gate, which is like a different event that pops up in the ocean. It's usually on Saturday. If you go down to sailing over here, Gate to Harmony. So basically these keys that you get from doing your sailing co-op will give you more keys to do uh, the different events. You'll be able to open up chests with these key and get more uh, pirate coins. So whatever you do, don't ignore your world events and your Procyon's compass. It's an easy way to get gold and resources that help better your character. Uh, tip number seven, Una dailies. Everyone tells you to do your Una dailies. And actually, there's a really good source uh, for what Una dailies are good, and I will link that below. But Maxwell has this nice little source that tells you what are what Una dailies are good for your character, and I'll link them down below in the comments section. But you can basically get skill points, giant hearts, Omni Star that gives you skill points, a bunch of other things, leap stones, which are really important on your main. You should be doing some type of leap stone daily uh, for assisting your upgrade. Island hearts, silver, pirate coin, masterpieces, bunch of collection stuff, virtue stat. Uh, stat stuff and stronghold stuff. So make sure you don't ignore your Una dailies, right? Um, 
And you'll you, know, you could do Una dailies on your main. You could also do them on your alt. Uh, you can repeat the same Una dailies uh, every single day, but you'll only be able to get reputation for your Una dailies once, right? It'll be grayed out. Also, another mistake a lot of new players make is not getting their additional rewards from their Una dailies. So as you do your Una dailies, you build up a reputation status, and you actually have to loot that, right? So in this reputation tab, uh, you could like scroll through here. And look, I have one that I have to claim. I have to claim it. And that's how you get the additional rewards. So make sure you're claiming the additional rewards when you complete your Una dailies. Also for your Una dailies, uh, you will get these Una tokens. What the heck are these Una tokens for? Well, you'll queue those Una tokens and in town there's a gold shop. It's right over here. So I'll actually show you guys what it is, but you'll essentially trade your Una tokens for gold and there are different bags you could buy there's one for uh 80 token there's one for 200 token there's a large one for 500 tokens so uh, I'll, I'll buy one and just show you guys uh just for science but each i just waited until a large bar i just opened up some gold and i end up getting a little bit of g okay i'll do one more one, one more gamble let's see if we get a let me let's see if we get a big bar oh i didn't get a big bar okay Okay, just one, one, la one last one. This is also why I don't live in Las Vegas. Okay, two last ones. Okay, here we go. Oh, uh, yeah, so I actually had really, really bad RNG. I didn't make a bunch of gold. I did get, like, some gold, but I didn't make, I didn't make a whole bunch of gold. Um, yeah, so make sure you do your Una dailies. Make sure you collect your reputation rewards. And then every week, make sure to uh, grab your Una tokens from the sidebar and use the gold exchange vendor. And hopefully you have better RNG and not get scammed by the vendor. Um... <laughs> okay, tip number eight, or mistakes that new players make. Not using the in-game movement system. So obviously you have like your mount, you have your character's feet and stuff like that. Uh, if you press F2, you have your song of return. So like whenever you go to a city, you could like set up your portal statue. But also there's these things called the Bifrost. The Bifrost is absolutely amazing, okay? You can set this anywhere in the world. Let's say if you have an alt that is doing Una dailies and you have to drive to the island every day, you could literally slap that Bifrost on that island and instantly teleport to them. And that's what you should be doing to your alt. Every alt that you have, you know, you have three Una dailies, literally just save your location on that island. And then every single day when you log in, click move, move, move. And then just, you just knock out your daily super quick like that. So make sure you set up your Bifrost. Another thing a lot of new players ignore is um, the in-game sailing public transport. And that allows you to go continent to continent. I have an SSD, but the loading time is slow. Oh, no. my, my. So there's this little guy over here. He's like the ocean liner and barker guy. And he can basically sail to any continent. By this guy. Though. So let's say you have something to do. You just come over here and you just sail over to him. Uh, I don't usually use them. Most of us use a uh, normal transport and the Bifrost. And then obviously, finally, you got your boat. Um... You guys want to see my boat? I'll show you guys my boat. And obviously, you want to get your boat set up also. The Honestly, the best boat to start off with uh, is your SDQ, right? You level up to level 5. Uh, some of the best sailors are cows, poopering, and then there's also... Uh, well, I actually don't even have her right now, but... Uh, you can also use Tasha, but I don't have Tasha. So yeah, make sure you like upgrade your boat and stuff like that. And I got the free Willy skin on it. So anyways, make sure to use make sure to use uh, the 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 Bifrost basically in your end game teleportation stuff. Uh, next thing a lot of people don't even know about is your end game codex. If you ever have a question about the game, the end game codex is there to help you. So let's say uh, I just said cows, right? If I ever want to find out where the cow's crewman is from for your boat, it'll tell you their location. If you want to know where you get a, I don't know, giant's heart, it'll tell you where you get the first giant's heart. Uh, if you want to know the location of all the charisma potions for the game for building up your rapport, 
they also have that. Basically, if you have like any question almost about anything in the game, you could type that question into the search bar regarding like a material or some type of uh, in-game system. It'll let you know the location of it. Okay. So make sure you use the in-game codex. It really, really helps you out. Uh, and then the 10th tip is people skipping rapport. Rapport is essentially your reputation with different NPCs. I'll also include this in the intro or in the comments section below. But basically you build up your reputation with different NPCs on different continents. Uh, when you do that via songs or via gifts, it'll they'll give you additional rewards. They could give you, uh, you know, different potions. They could give you island hearts. They give you skill points. They could give you runes. They could give you gold. Uh, they could give you a lot of good stuff. So every single day, you want to be basically doing uh, your reputation stuff. So make sure you're doing your rapport. Um, and if you ever want to access your rapport status, you can do it in-game. It's Alt-N. And uh, let's say on this on, you want to know what's going on or what you got there. Right? This lady, right? Amicable? She gives me 1,400 gold. Right? This lady over here? She gives me some silver. On Phaeton Islands, like based on all the Phaeton people, they are free gold. This is 900 gold, right? That's silver. This guy, this lady, 900 more gold. This little cute cat thing, more gold. All right, so if you ever want to know what rapport vendors give what, you can look it up in game and it'll tell you. Uh, but most of the time, people will start with like Beatrice and Sasha, uh, the captain. Um, and it all depends like whatever your goals in the game are, but I'll link this down in the section below and uh, Make sure you do your rapport every day very important then last but not least this is a what well, we're actually seeking 11th tip is uh, Mary shop People often confuse Mary shop as pay to win It's not pay to win Mary shop is the equalizer to free to play players, okay? And the reason why is there is a currency exchange in game. What you can do is you can acquire gold through a bunch of various in-game activities, right? And all you do is go to this little buy crystals thing. You exchange your gold for crystals, right? And then you look at your in-game shop and more often than not, the stuff in Mary's shop is substantially cheaper than the marketplace. Sometimes you get two, three, four, five times the mats you would get from the marketplace if all you do is convert your crystals to gold. You don't have to spend a single cent of real life money doing this. You just basically transfer the in-game currency you grinded into a different currency and then you buy it from Mary's shop. So don't be afraid to use Mary's shop. Mary's shop is actually your friend and gives you stuff a lot cheaper than what you'd get it at within the marketplace. Anyways, uh, that's my 10 or maybe 11 tips for new players or mistakes I see new players making in Lost Ark. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.